Hello, I'm Dave O'Neill at Century 21 Northeast and I'd like to welcome you to Price This House. It's our annual review for the sixth time. Can you believe that? We've been off for six years now. And I'm Kimberly O'Neill Mara and here's the 2018 Year in Review. We're going to start as always reviewing the towns of North Reading, Reading, Linfield and Andover. And to start with North Reading, here's Dave with just the facts. Great. It was a uh, very healthy year in North Reading, pretty much equal to the year before, 2017. Uh, single family homes, it was 179 versus 178. Uh, average list price was 600000 Average list price last year was 596 virtually the same. Average sale price, 599 511 versus 595 638 Dollars per square foot, 278 this year and 275 last year. Days to an offer. 27 this year and 29 last year. So again, virtually a really level market from the year before. For condos, we had 73 sold in 2018 and 57 sold in 2017. A slight increase of about 28% there. Average list was 302 versus 329 a year ago. Average sales price for condos in 2018 was 308 versus 331 a year ago. Price per square foot this year was 288 versus 256, and that's a 13% increase. And days on market went from 21, 3 last year to 25 this year. Again, virtually a level market. Multifamilies, which every time we say there aren't many multifamilies in North Reading, so it doesn't really affect it, but there were three this year versus two last year sold. Average list price this year, 503 versus 509 last year. 479 this year versus 530 last year. $193 a square foot last year, this year versus 202 last year. Days on market, five versus 20 last year. So again, the numbers are so small that it's virtually a level market. And land in North Reading, there were three parcels sold in each year. Uh, the average list price in 2018 was 508 versus 2017 was 364. Average sale price, 434 versus 365. And days on market, for 2018 is 72 versus 2017, 195. Again, those per percentages change big when the numbers are so small. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at these numbers. Kim, back to you. Thank you. Now for a review of the 2018 market in Reading. For single family sales, we had 222 units sold compared to 256 a year ago. That's a 13% decrease. Um, the average list price was 647 this year versus 619 last year, so that's actually a 5% increase, which is nice to see. Um, and the average sale price was um, consistent at 656 for this year versus 633 for last year, which is a 4% increase this year over 2017. The price per square foot this year was slightly up to 313 versus 306 last year. That's a 2% increase. And the days to offer were 21 versus 20 last year. So virtually um, the same, however, um, you know, very strong to have your days to offer be 20 and 21. Um, the condo market um, actually decreased a little bit last year. Um, remember a year ago when there were some new construction condos, so it kind of skews the data here a little bit. But for condos in Reading, we had 95 sell this year versus 135 a year ago, which is a 30% decrease. The average list price was 428 this year versus 443 last year, which is a slight decrease of 3%. And the average sale price was 428 versus 445 last year, which was a 4% decrease. Price per square foot stayed pretty consistent at 327 this year versus 326 last year. And the days on market was 23 this year versus 34 a year ago, uh, which is a 32% decrease. Multifamilies, they have a few more there than, than in North Reading. We had 10 sell this year versus 11 last year, which is um, just a 9% decrease. Um, and the average list price this year was 647 versus 591 a year ago, which is a 10% increase, which is again nice to see. And the average sale price was 636 this year versus 582 last year, which is a 9% increase. So a solid market in Reading. Um, price per square foot also stayed consistent with multifamilies at 236 both this year and last. And the days on market were 62 this year versus 25 last year. Sometimes with new construction, your days on market um, can increase because you put it on market before you know the house is even framed. So that skews the data a little bit there. 
for land. Um, there was no land sold in Reading this year or last year, so we'll turn it back to Dave to talk about Linfield. Okay, we're going to go over to Linfield now. 2018, there were 151 homes sold versus 2017, 157. Again, it's only a 4% decrease, but it's virtually the same. Average list price in 2018 was 736 versus 727 in 2017. Average sales price in 18 was 728 versus 712 a year ago, just a 2% differential. Price per square foot is 281 for 2018 versus 276 for 2017. And days to offer, 37 in 2018 versus 35 in 2017. Again, pretty much even the whole way through. The condos were down a little bit in 2018, 21 versus 30 in 2017, and that was um, a 30% decrease, but that was, there was a lot of new construction the year before. Uh, average list price this year was 551 versus 563 a year ago. Average sales price of 542 versus 561 a year ago. Price per square foot, 298 versus 284. And days on mark or days on market 88 in 2018 versus 54 in 2017. So that was a little bit of a bump up, but um, the pricing and everything is about two percent differentials. Multifamilies non-existent in the town of Linfield, so we can just skip right past that section. And for land in 2018, we had two parcels of land versus four in 2017. Average list price 435,000 in 2018 versus 624. Average sale price 405 in 18 versus 578. And again, days on market 295 for the two in uh, 2018 and 34 for the four in 2017. But um, you never know exactly which, because it's a small number of properties, which um, is going to skew the percentages that you see on the board there. Exactly. Thank you. And now for Andover, um, the 2018 uh, number of homes sold for single families was 346, down a little bit from last year of 375. That's an 8% decrease. Um, the average list price was up, however, to 763 versus 699 a year ago. That's a 9% increase, which is fabulous to see. Uh, the average sale price was 754 versus 696 a year ago, so an 8% increase in the sales price there. And the price per square foot stayed exactly the same, 257 for both years. Um, days to offer was down a little bit, but pretty much even uh, 34 this year versus 36 a year ago. So a very strong market in Andover. Um, condo sales were about flat. We had 151 this year versus 152 last year. Obviously a slight decrease. The average list price was 396 versus 414 a year ago. So they went down about 5%. And the average sale price went down also uh, to 396 this year versus 411 a year ago. That's about a 4% decrease. Uh, price per square foot was 282 this year versus 268 last year, so that's a 5% increase. And days on market um, was fairly um, even at 46 this year versus 40 a year ago. That's a 15% change. Multifamilies, we had four sell this year versus eight a year ago, so that's obviously a 50% decrease. Uh, the average list price was 479 versus 487 a year ago, so that's a 2% decrease this year. And the average sale price was 489 versus uh, 483, so that's a 1% increase. The price per square footage uh, was 175 this year versus 208 a year ago, so that's a 16% drop. But again, when you're talking about four units, it's hard to look at the percentage. Uh, days on market was 24 this year versus 13 a year ago. Um, there was no land sold in Andover um, this year um, compared to five um, sold last year. Last year, there was an average list price of $1.4 million um, and an average sale price of $1.33. Um, but that was the Elm Street, the big development, mm -hmm. the big parcel of land. So that really skews all other land um, comparables. And again, there was none this year. So, you know, not even worth talking about. Um, and so that's just the facts for our four towns. Uh, and now we're going to talk about the spotlight. We're going to spotlight one home in each of the communities. And for this, um, for this episode, we're going to look at homes that all hover kind of in that 850000 range because it's a really popular price point in all four of the communities. So, Dave, why don't you start off with uh, our spotlight on North Reading. Great. If you remember last show, we did it at a million. Mm -hmm. So eight fifty this time. First property we're going to talk about is 12 Heritage Way in North Reading. 
It was a 3,200 square foot home with a finished basement, which brings it up to about 4,000 square feet. It was listed at 869.9, sold for 852.275 in about 30 days. It was 11 rooms, four bedrooms, three and a half baths, and three fireplaces. It was absolutely beautiful. The kitchen was new, a uh, newer, and uh, the, the decorating and the um, appointments throughout the house was just pristine. It was on two acres of land, did have a swimming pool, did have a tree house for the kids, and um, it went really, really fast. Uh, it was in the Bachelor School area, which is always a favorite area. You can walk to the center of town, you can walk to Ipswich, and um, people jumped on it at 8.52. Wonderful. In Reading, we had a unique property, um, one of my favorites, an antique. Um, it was 434 Haverhill Street in Reading. It was on the market for 8.49 and sold for 8.44. It was an antique salt box um, with seven rooms, three bedrooms, and three full baths, six fireplaces. It was really beautiful. Um, you know, they say they, they don't build them like they used to. And this was, um, this tour was, this home was actually featured on the Reading House Tour. It's known as the Daniel Nichols Home. And it had incredible six fireplaces, original wide floors, beam ceilings, two staircases. Um, really just, you know, for an antique enthusiast, this was a gorgeous, gorgeous property. Also had central air and a two-car garage, um, as well as a guest house um, and beautiful, beautiful gardens. So, you know, um, antiques aren't for everybody, but for those that appreciate them, this was really a gem and um, it was a great sale uh, value at 844. Great. So let's go over to Linfield now. We're going to do a condo. It's a detached condo at 46 Green Street was on for 849.9, sold for 849.9 in a relatively short period of time, about 30 days. It's new construction of 4,000 square feet. It is absolutely stunning. Appointments throughout, had gorgeous white kitchen cabinet with an island, stainless quartz, hardwood throughout, uh, four bedrooms, two and a half baths, uh, amazing master spa with his and her walk-in closets, finished attic, and uh, sits on about 15,000 square, square foot lot in a brand new nine lot subdivision. So new construction is always um, a hot commodity and to be on a cul-de-sac in a, con a freestanding condo at 850, that's pretty much where you're gonna be in any of the local communities. Um, so it's back to you. Great, thank you. And for our Andover location, we chose 260 Chandler Street, um, which is uh, in the High Plain Wood Hill area of Andover. It, this was a Colonial Contemporary on the market for $849.9, sold for $835. It's a 10 room, four bedroom home with three and a half baths, including a master, two fireplaces, um, approximately 5,500 square feet on an acre lot. Um, really had you know, lots of bells and whistles. Um, including uh, a gaming, uh, a huge gaming room, um, walkout garage access, very well cared for, beautiful wraparound porch um, in the Andover Country Club section of town. Um, it did include a 1,600 square foot um, lower level, which was the game room and also a workshop and half and a half bath. Um, but really a beautiful, beautiful home um, sold for 835. Wow. And that really wraps up our spotlight. We're going to take a short break and come back with the talk of the town. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now it's time for Talk of the Town. We're very pleased today to have with us Al Pereira from Advanced Photo, who's very involved in the community. And we just wanted to kind of maybe recap the recent uh, Lighting Up Main Street event and talk about what else is coming down the road. Al, welcome. Well, thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. And it's great to be here. Uh, well, let's just recap uh, the Main Street Lighting, how it got started in your head, and how you progressed and got, made it to be such a successful event. You know, how it started was I actually, believe it or not, I sat down, you know, at the store and I, I looked out the window and I said, Christmas is coming. And is it going to be the same or is it going to be different this year? And all of a sudden I started kind of asking my customers what would they think if we kind of lit up Main Street. Mm -hmm. And they looked at me and said, what do you mean? I said, well, get the business to, you know, put Christmas lights up and uh, decorate the outside of their buildings. Said, yeah, I think that'd be great. It'd be a great community, uh, you know, event. Yeah. So and that's how it really started. Mm -hmm. Then I posted it on Facebook and I asked the same question and said, I love, uh, you know, uh, Christmas lights are more the merrier and it makes me happy and this and that. So 
I said, okay, so what's the next step? And I decided that I was going to go out there and go to every single business on Main Street and walked in and those that didn't know me, I introduced myself. Those that did, I said, would you mind just putting a couple of strings of lights on, on you know, your window or if you want to do something outside? And everybody that I you know, approached basically said yes. So how, about how many businesses participated? I, I, I would say probably over 70% mm -hmm. of them. Wow, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Uh, and I, I was amazed um, the closer that we got to um, the main event that you know people were already turning their lights on. Mm -hmm. So I, one would do it and then another one would do it and then the next day there'd be three more. They didn't even wait for that mm -hmm. special day which mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. uh, you know the uh, tree lighting. But you know you can't just have um, Christmas lights and not have a Christmas tree. Yeah. So that was the next idea that mm -hmm. uh, you know that had to kind of be put together in a little puzzle. Mm -hmm. And uh, you and I actually talked mm -hmm. about you know where to put it and whether we should get it or not. Mm -hmm. Then we talked about kitties. Mm -hmm. Um, and I approached Scotty, and he said, absolutely. So, And he, they were gracious. They actually did, you know, get mm -hmm. the appropriate people to do, you know, mm -hmm. the decorating. And, I mean, you saw the results. It's spectacular. Mm -hmm. And it was neat. It wasn't just lights. You had, you know, Soup and Mint had their um, truck out front, and you had different people have little trains or different, like, it, would, it went, like, it just, like, kind of festered into so yeah. much more. Well, you know, one of the things is that, you, you know, you can't just flip a switch and not celebrate that, you know, that switch because, you know, first of all, it's really never been done, on, you know, on Main Street. And so I wanted to celebrate the tree lighting and along with all the businesses that, um, you know, took the time to, you know, hang lights up. And so you, I wanted to make it a community event. I wanted to make it that businesses and the community actually kind of met each other and kind of congregated and got to know each other. Not just lighting up, a, you know, a tree, but also to get to know the business owners. So the idea was, okay, let's put up, you know, chairs or tents. Let's bring trucks from the companies that have trucks uh, and get people to know that, you know, who you are because if you meet the business owners, it kind of makes it now more personal, mm -hmm. you know? So from that, okay, what else do we do? Well, the pie eating contest, the ugly sweater contest, you gotta have a Santa. So yeah. I reached out to Santa and he was great. So we had photos with Santa. And Mrs. Claus and uh, yeah. oh, yeah. Elsa and Anna from Frozen were yeah. there. I mean, yeah. it was really spectacular. It was really a festival. It was. Did you picture it being a festival like that in the beginning? Uh, I, I pictured it being a gathering, not a festival. Mm -hmm. And to my surprise, it was. I mean, it, it was, you know, to be honest with you, I thought we were going to get 50 to 100 people. And all of a sudden, you know, they came out of nowhere. And it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. And all estimates, I, I actually placed it at 500. But if you really do the numbers, we had closer to 900 people show up. Wow. And For that the was the first year. year. With, I mean, you know, that was just amazing. Basically, and, the yeah. marketing was social media. Mm -hmm. So oh, there wasn't, you know, postcards, there wasn't mailers or anything like that, no ads. Word of mouth and social it was media. That, yeah. Well, actually, you have to basically say the transcript did a really good job. I think it was like four weeks in a row there was something about the tree lighting. Um, and, you know, they did a great job. Maureen did a great job. But, uh, you know, with social media, you reach so many different people. So what do you do? Well, you, you know, do you write? So I started going around each businesses and made 30 second spots and I got them to sing. You know, these people don't, you know, they couldn't sing, but it was not the idea. It was the idea that, you know, they, they really, you know, tried and they wanted to have fun in front of the camera and let people know that, hey, you know what, you know, we're part of the community, so we want this mm -hmm. to be working for everybody. Um, I had them uh, dancing, I mean, you know, in their shop and their customers were laughing. So it was exciting. And then to put those together and post it on it and hear the comments, you know, you know, write, you know the comments that people were writing, mm -hmm. it, it made it even, made me even want to do more. So is it you safe know. to assume that that was the first annual? Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no, there's going to be, uh, you know, it, I'm excited for next year. 
I don't want to give up any uh, secrets, but uh, I think you're going to be excited if everything works out. Um, but, you know, there's a long time in between, you know, now and Christmas, so uh, we're going to be working on making Main Street a little bit more attractive. We want, it to, we want Main Street to be a, uh, you know, uh, not a, go, a drive through but a go-to place. Mm -hmm. There's so many different businesses uh, on Main Street that people kind of fly down, you know, north, go north, go south, and they don't have a chance to kind of, you know, look because, you know, they've got to get from one destination to another. So a little bit at a time, we're going to change that, and I think it's going to be exciting for North Reading, the community, and even people from other towns, I think, are going to start noticing. So we're going to be working on, you know, mm -hmm. a few things. Yeah, I know that you had, like, the do briefing and a little bit of a committee. Do you envision the committee just growing and growing and growing, and are there, are there certain things that you need and certain things that some of our viewing audience may be able to reach out to you that if you need any assistance with anything specific? Well, one of my ideas is, you know, it's not, you know, I, I even said this to Dave and a few other businesses. You know, the, the business community is basically the leaders, and they what they do, people notice. If they don't do something, people notice. So we have to take that initiative and take that first step in making things happen by, you know, decorating for Christmas. Well, you know, you have other holidays, you have other events. You know, let's make that a continuation of, you know, we, the com you know, business community, you know, want to be more part of the uh, community and, and celebrating alongside you. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole idea, you know, between, you know, and I want this to be not only a business, but the community. So going forward, you know, I'm going to, you know, uh, reach out to the business community to come to some of the meetings that I want to hold. Eventually, after a few meetings, I'm going to invite the community also. Mm -hmm. The entrance, uh, you know, lately people have been talking about Main Street for, in particular, about, you know, the storage building going up and the other building going up, and they're taking an interest on Main Street. So we, were, we have a momentum going, and so why not invite, you know, the community you know, to come in and say, okay, we would like to see this or we would like to see that. And, you know, maybe we as a group can take this to town hall and say, look at, you know, we've got a lot of people talking about Main Street and these are the things that they would like to see, you know, go on, on Main Street. Uh, you know, uh, get rid of the poles. Let's put some really nice fancy lights on both sides. Um, you know, let, let's paint the uh, hydrants. Uh, let, let's clean up this area here, which belongs to the town and it's been neglected for, you know, for many years, um, you know. Uh, things like that that make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe talk about some of the things that uh, the um, slowing down traffic on Main Street. Mm -hmm. You know what? Maybe you know, uh, but it it's been like three or four meetings that they've had, and they had the public input. But you know, I know it's long term and the vision that they see. But maybe taking those and maybe implement them a little bit sooner. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be anything major, but little things here and there to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And we need to make a difference on Main Street. So it really is a grassroots effort, yep. and the grassroots leading the way, and that will eventually help Absolutely. cause some of those changes to come. Absolutely. And I think if every property owner takes pride in their property um, and work together in unison, I think you'll see a result a lot faster. And that's important because, you know, if you don't have participation mm -hmm. from the business community, if you have one here and one there, and then all of a sudden you don't have you know, uh, a dozen, and then you have one. You know, it has to be unity, and it has to be everybody working with, for the same vision mm -hmm. and on the same goal, you know. And I think the community getting involved will show the business owners that the community really wants to get involved with the business community, mm -hmm. you know. So I think it's, it's a two-tier kind of thing. It can't be just right. one side. It's got to be both sides. Right, right, right. So are there any other, like, event type of things that you have in mind, or is it too soon to reveal them? Uh, well, uh, you know, I have to, uh, you know, I, I have ideas in my brain, um, but you, you have to have people that are interested in doing sure. this. So, you can't do it all, right? we'll, you know, we have to have these meetings and talk about what our next step is. You know, I've always said it, and I, you know, I've said it to you, it's not Al's ideas, it has to be, you know, everyone's ideas. 
but someone has to take that initial step mm -hmm. and hopefully as Al's idea is presented, well, wait a minute, why don't we do this and you know, make it better, make it work for everybody and not just call it Al, but it, you know, a business community uh, and the, in the community, the not credit community's ideas mm -hmm. and vision. You know, but somebody has to kind of lead the way. Yeah, and well, thank you for doing that. It was certainly a successful yeah. mm -hmm. was succeeding yeah. and, uh, yeah. season and event. So. Yeah. Yeah. It will make all the other events easier to do now that that proved to be a success right up front. One of the things that I was really excited about was on the day of the tree lighting, um, I had uh, the uh, town administrator, and he actually came up to me and said, you did a real good job, Al. I said, really? Okay, well, thank you. I really appreciate that. And I said, you know, I do have some ideas <laughs> that I'd like to kind of present to you. Any chance on, you know, setting up a meeting? And he was all for it. You know, doing something like that showed the town fathers, politicians, that, you know, it, 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 I think it shows them that, you know, people want to make changes on Main Street for the better. So with that and what happened there that you know the business community the community itself you know getting together and celebrating something mm -hmm. i think it made them more way that, you know, aware that you know they really need to look at main street a lot more so it is a community not just the whole overall community yeah. but main street and the businesses are a community in itself that's correct so i think that that opened up doors for possibly making some changes mm -hmm. for the better for the community for the businesses as, as a whole well you should be proud because it really was successful okay. and thank people you. are still thank talking you. about it so well, thank you i think I really that's great. appreciate that yeah. well thank you very much for your efforts and oh, thank you thank for you. joining us on price this house oh, we I, really appreciate it no, I, I, this was fun thank you thank you for having me great Thank I think you. that wraps it up for today. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Welcome. And right now, Kim's going to take over the Beantown and Beyond segment of the show. All right. Well, I'm bringing to you um, some interesting information. We usually talk about like a highlighted property that's actually on the market, but I'm actually going to talk about a property that just went under agreement. And it's actually the old Amrines in South Boston. Mm. Um, it is the oldest bar in South Boston, and it's actually um, supposed to be the oldest wood-carved bar in the country. And it's located right across from not only the West Broadway tea stop, but also the first piece of real estate that I ever purchased. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a condo uh, in a building right across the street from there. And it's um, a restaurant and bar, as well as an additional very coveted parking lot and um, one of our old stomping grounds. So I wanted to just highlight this because in South Boston, this lower end of South Boston, you couldn't give property away there not too long ago. And I haven't told Dave the number yet. Do you want to guess what this just sold I for? I wouldn't even go there. <laughs> 18 million. Wow. Yeah. So stay tuned. We'll be bringing you some, you know, new development um, when they, you know, finally, they're going to keep the restaurant open for a little bit of time, but there are going to be some condo and mixed juice developments going into that space. So something really exciting, as I said, for me, owning property right across the street from it, that's really going to be huge for the South Boston community and something to keep an eye on. So that's a little bit of being 10 and beyond. And over to you for uh, something to talk about. Now we're going to do uh, one property that we wanted to just kind of leave you thinking about. In North Reading, we have new construction. It's about 1,260 square feet of living area on a 3,000 square foot lot. So it's basically a detached townhouse. You have no condo fee. You own the land. You can do what you want. But it's in that um, style of six rooms. It has a fireplace living room, a nice, beautiful white kitchen with an island with granite, stainless has a nice dining area, breakfast bar with sliders out to the yard. Also has two big bedrooms upstairs. One is a master with its own private bed, bath and closet. And the other is a um, second bedroom with a hall bathroom. And then there's a small um, guest uh, room or a study uh, up there. So it has forced hot air by propane gas. It has gas cooking, gas fireplace, has the complete first floor of all hardwood. It is really, really a nice home. It's on the market at 499 
I can't remember the last time we had That's new construction. That's a steal for new construction. That's I cannot remember the last time of. we had 500000 A few years back, but uh, not, nothing lately. So if you know anybody that's interested in either a starter home or a downsizer, a lot of times people want to stay in the community but don't need the big home that they might have right now. It's the same quality that you would get in one of those big homes. So I would call your attention to 23 Audubon Road in North Reading, listed right now at four ninety nine nine. dollars I'm sure it's going to go relatively quickly. Thanks. If you have questions on that property or anything that we've talked about today or anything in real estate in general, please feel free to reach out to us at price.thishouse at century21.com. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you had a nice time uh, with the show. We want to wish you a happy 2019. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Bye.